friends and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about money and specifically about budgeting. Now, when I first got married, I had zero money managing skills. I very quickly spent us into several thousand dollars worth of credit card debt soon after we were married and it took me several years to pay it off. Now that was a very painful lesson to learn and I've never had to relearn it. So I want to share a couple of quotes with you. Ben Franklin said that by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Dave Ramsey has a quote, a budget is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. Also, he says, a budget isn't about restricting what you can spend. It gives you permission to spend without guilt or regret. And I love that because that's exactly how I feel. I had no idea how to budget money or anything remotely close to that. And Glenn taught me that. And one thing I can honestly tell you is since I learned to budget money, there's such a sense of peace and freedom because when you know that your monthly bills are coming up, say your house payments coming up or um, your car insurance, that's a big one because you only pay it twice a year. I, I'm not getting stressed out about it because I know I've already put the money in there month by month. So when that six month payment comes up, no sweat, I just pay it. The money is there. And that's the beauty of budgeting. You are not stressing about your bills. You've already put the money in there. So when it comes time to pay it, you just go ahead and pay it. There's no stress. There's no, there's no drama. It's just so simple. And I highly recommend if you have not mastered budgeting your money, please try this method. It's wonderful. And the peace it will bring into your life is amazing. So as I go over this budget with you. The easiest way to do this would be go ahead and stop this video and print it out. It's in the description below so that you have it there in front of you so that you can follow along. And please, if you have any questions about this, um, either put them in the comments below or go ahead and email me at livingbetterwithbarb at gmail.com. I'll be glad to answer them and help you out. I really want this to work for you. So go ahead and stop the video, then restart and we'll go on with this. Friends, if you're enjoying the content of this video, please click the like and subscribe buttons below. That really helps my channel. If you click on the notification bell also, that'll notify you each time I put out a new video. We have the actual budget. So this top here is the actual budget part. And this was done on an Excel spreadsheet. And know that the green columns and also the checking account automatically total. So as you change the numbers here, this bottom total will automatically change. Same thing is true of the checking account. As you put different numbers in here, the total number will change. Now that is not true of the savings account. The savings account, you will add this yourself. Say you have $500 in there and you're adding another $100. You will do the adding. You'll put $600 in there. This is just like a kind of a holding place for your, your number so you know what's in there. So you'll actually do the adding. Also keep in mind when we're doing great grocery for grocery this includes your food your paper products your cleaning supplies your pet food anything that you buy at a grocery store is included in what we call grocery also you need to know that we base this budget on two people bringing home a thousand dollars a week you're gonna have to adjust that to your household you may make more you may make less so you're going to have to adjust that number. Also, the home insurance we based on $1,020 a year. You're going to divide, you're going to put your number in there and divide it by 12 so that you know what that number should be for each month, as well as your life and car insurance. We base that on $1,680 a year. So you'll put your number in there and then divide it by 12 and that will be your number here as well. This is we've, your $1,000. This is your, this represents 
your net pay, your bring home pay. As you change these numbers around, you need this number to equal your bring home pay that week. We also have something called a flex fund. You'll see it represented down here. Your flex fund is exactly that. That's the flexible money. That's the money that's not accounted for in any particular way. Your flex fund is kind of a little bit like an emergency fund. You want to get that up to $1,000 as soon as possible. Your goal is to get it up to $3,000. That way, what it does, it covers, like if you have a major car breakdown or any car breakdown, if you have your refrigerator breaks down, your washer, your dryer, all these things in life, you know, things break down. Well, you're going to have that covered because you have that flex fund and you're not going to panic. There's not going to be any drama. You just know you've planned, you've prepared because you know life throws things at you. You've prepared for it. You're not stressed out. And that flex fund gives you so much peace because you it allows you to take care of things without being stressed out. Say you need four new tires on your vehicle. No problem. You've got it covered. So you want to build that up as soon as possible. Hit that thousand dollars, then two thousand, then three thousand. From that point on, any extra money can go into your savings account, but you really want to get that build up as soon as possible. Also, as you figure out where to put your bills, you're going to put them at least one week, possibly two, depending on how you do it, but you want them at least one week before they're due. So any bills that you have due at the end of the month, you want to make sure that they're either in the third column or the second column because you want to make sure the money is there before the bill comes due. And say, again, you have bills due at the first of the month where well, you want to make sure that you've got them in your budget for either the fourth week or the third week of the month. So before the first ever hitch, you know you've got the money in there. That's really important. So the first thing you're going to do with your budget is these bills, you're going to place them strategically for when your bills come due so that you know the money is in there ahead of time. And then you're going to take your house payment, uh, rent payment, whichever it is, and you can divvy it up. Now on this budget, we have it all divided out equally. On our personal budget, we do not because there are going to be weeks that some of your bills run kind of high. So your house payment might be lower that week, whereas another week you might not have very much in your bill section. You might have a higher house payment, but you, you divide your house payment out among the weeks in the way that makes the most sense to you. So your goal is to have your flex fund come out equally or close to equally for each week. You don't want to have one week where you have a flex fund of $10 and another week where you have a flex fund of like $200, that won't work. So you need your flex fund to come out equally. So that's what you're working towards. The first thing you do is you put your bills in here and you make sure that they're going to be in there at least one week ahead of when they come due to pay. Then you're going to split up your house payment to make these numbers come out equal so that your flex fund comes out equal. That's really important. So you're going to play with the numbers till you get them how you want them. Another thing to keep in mind, you're, you possibly have subscriptions like Netflix or Hulu or Audible. Those are things that you're going to need to add here, as well as maybe you see a therapist or a chiropractor on a regular basis. Those are things you're going to need to add in here and then put the amounts in here. Also, make sure you put them where they belong for when they come due. You're also going to need to add them down here as well. So what we do each week, the first thing we do is because we are Christians, we pay our tithe. That is 10% that we give back to the church, to the Lord, because it's our way of saying thank you for the many blessings that he has blessed us with. The next thing we do is we pay ourselves. We put 10% in savings. So each week we pay the Lord, we pay ourselves, and then we budget the other 80%. So you'll have your bills here and you're going to take this money and add it over here to the checking account. If you already have money in here from the previous weeks, which you will, you just simply Simply add this onto what's already here and the total at the bottom will automatically adjust. Now your savings, you're going to have to add that. Like I said before, you're going to have to add that on yourself there. Now, say it comes time to pay a bill. It's time to pay the electric bill or the trash bill. You just zero this out, zero this out, 
and go ahead and pay it. But then this, when you zero this out, it automatically adjusts the total down here because this is an Excel spreadsheet and I've got that formula worked in there. Now, the exception would be your grocery and your car gas because several times a week you're going to be in there, and I speak about this a little bit later, what we do for that, but several times a week you're going to come in here and adjust these numbers and deduct from them because you're going to you're going to make purchases so that you always have an accurate up-to-date amount that you know you have in there and you know what you have to work with. And again, your total for your flex fund, you want to get that up to 3000 Once you hit your 3000 then your flex fund, you just start adding that to your savings. As long as your flex fund's at 3000 your extra flex fund, you just add that to your savings until you have to use it for something. Say the seasons change and you need a few items of clothing or like I said maybe you need new tires for your car or the washer breaks down whatever you use the money you then quickly replace it but once that's at 3,000 that extra money your extra flex money just goes into your savings account okay so there you go I also did want to say sometimes there are some people that only get paid twice a month so for you what you would do is just go ahead and zero out two of the middle columns that second and fourth column and then just label the columns week one and week two and week three so that third week will be a couple times a year you're going to get a third paycheck so that's what that last column will be for but go ahead and um, delete the columns two and four so that it doesn't get confusing for you and Split your bills up between week one and week two. That'll be a lot easier for you as you move along with your budget. Okay, friends, I do want to add one more thing. Now, down here, you have your grocery and your car gas. And, you know, you're always putting each week, you're putting from here to here. You're, you're adding constantly to the totals in your checking account from here. And then as you pay the bills, you, you zero them out here and it automatically changes your total down here but it's a little bit different with the car gas and the groceries because multiple times throughout the week, you are um, purchasing gas or groceries. So what we do is we keep those receipts and we bring them home, we stick them in an envelope right inside our desk drawer, and then two, three times a week, we'll take and subtract these receipts from our totals here on the sheet. This is actually in the computer, but you know what I mean. I mean, you can keep a physical copy and do it that way too. But the important thing is that a few times a week, you need to subtract your receipts so that you have an accurate total and understand how much you actually have for your gas and groceries left each week. You need to know how much you have to work with. So just keep that in mind. But this is a real easy way to do that. And again, we just keep this right inside our desk store as you walk in the door in the kitchen. So there you go. Friends, thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate you. I hope this video was beneficial to you and it really helps you on your financial journey. I hope it alleviates the stress and anxiety you feel at bill paying time. Just knowing the fact that when it comes time for those bills to be paid, you're not stressed. You're not where you know you've already put the money in the bank. The money is there to pay them. I really hope this serves you well. I would love to hear from you in the comments. Have you already started a budget or are you starting this for the first time? Keep me posted on your progress. I'd love to hear about it. So again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in the next one.